give myself away. myself away so you can use me I give myself away my life is not my own I give myself away since this was couple this was couple uh this was couple what days ago weeks ago at dr mike murdoch church the wisdom center i'm about to show you footage I give myself away so you can use me give myself away oh Give myself away. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Everyone, invite your followers. And say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. My life is not my own. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Oh, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Oh, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Here's my cup, Lord. Abba. Abba, Abba. I belong to you. You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. You're more real than the wind in my lungs. Your thoughts define me. You're inside me. You are my reality. You're my reality. <laughs> you're my reality. As you're joining our Shedish broadcast. As you're joining our share this broadcast, huh? Everyone, blessings to you. Abba, 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 I belong to you. I belong to you all. I belong to you. Abba. I belong to you. Look, Saints, this was just a couple of weeks ago.
Prophetic anointing. 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 Says, I do things to get me stirred up. There's things that you have to hear for you to move in your anointing. Saints, we give ourselves away so you <laughs> Saints, I'm going to show y'all some more clips. I'm telling you. <laughs> Give ourselves away. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Give ourselves away. I'm telling you, saints. I'm telling you, listen. Atlanta, Georgia gonna be powerful. Huh? Huh? Atlanta, Georgia going to be bombs over. I'm telling you. My life is not my own. Give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Oh, oh, give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, oh, oh. 
give myself away. My life is not my own. I'm telling you, saints. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some more, some more footage. It's powerful. My life is not my own. Abba. I belong to you. You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. <laughs> You're more real than the wind in my lungs. Your thoughts define me. You're inside me. You are my reality you're my reality you're my reality <laughs> you're my reality <laughs> and Tiff we done told you don't pick them or 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 <laughs> them orthopedics you're inside of me Abba, mm, I belong to you, I belong to you all. I, I, I like this scene. I'm going to show you something. Abba, Abba, Abba. I belong to you. Breathe upon me. Breath of God. Breathe upon me. Spirit of the Lord. Oh, as I lift my soul in surrender. To your name on high, high, I'm yielding to your spirit, and I am walking in your love, oh. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy name. I'm yielding to your spirit. I am walking in your love, oh, Jesus, I adore, Jesus. I adore Jesus. I adore your holy name. Jesus. 
Jesus, you'll be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Oh, Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna, be lifted higher, 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 Jesus, you. Be lifted higher, be lifted higher, higher. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill will not be Hard to climb. He never offered us victory without fighting. He said help will come right on time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision. And the adversary says, give in, just hold on, our Lord will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. That's Jason Crabb's song, Awesome Man of God. He never promised that the cross will not get heavy and the hill will not be hard to climb. He never offered us victory without fighting. He said help will come right on time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in. Just hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. Just hold on, hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. We bow down, we lay our crowns. <laughs> I'm about to show you this clip. At the feet of Jesus. The 
blessings of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus and we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 is the lamb Give me one second, Saints. I'm trying to zoom in. <laughs> Saints, all these clips were just weeks ago at the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. I'm having another one in Atlanta, Georgia. This was at Dr. Mike Murdoch Church. It was powerful. I still feel the anointing from it. I still feel the anointing from it.
Jesus Jesus Maharama Mama 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 Saints, I'm telling you, I'm stirred up for this meeting, I promise you. I'm stirred up for this meeting. The miracles are going to be amazing. When I tell you that the power of God is going to hit like never before, I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia, releasing the glory of Jesus Christ. Rapakarata. I'm going to be releasing the power of Jesus Christ.
Saints, I'm telling you, Atlanta, Georgia is going to be wild. <laughs> if you never felt the power of Jesus, you want to be there. I promise you. It's going to be a life changing experience like never before. I'm telling you, October the 5th through the 7th, get there, get there. Get there by any means necessary. Get there by any means necessary. When I tell you that the Holy Spirit has taken over my being to another level, I'm, I'm amazed. You don't want to miss being in my presence. October the 5th through the 7th in Atlanta, Georgia. It's, and it's free to attend. Maybe I should change my name to Bishop and call you. No. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe I should change my name and have, uh, have everybody pay $150 or $200. <laughs> Sarcastic anointing. I'm telling you, saints, the power of God is going to be amazing in Atlanta, Georgia. October the 5th through the 7th. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. You'll get to meet the prophet at the meeting. You'll get to meet the prophet at the meeting. Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday morning, Sunday night is going to be amazing. Everyone, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Invite your followers. There it is. Kara pa kara. I'm telling you, it's going to be a life changing impartation of Jesus. Makara ma 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 ma. Watch this here. Let's go back to the clips. I feel the anointing. Robo coste pere cara na 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 na. What's it? Jesus. 
defeated. Jesus. I'm telling you, saints, I'm going to be releasing that same power of Jesus, that same presence of Jesus. You don't want to miss it. Joining on Shedish broadcast saints. Kara pa kara. I'm telling you, saints. Powerful anointing. This was just a couple days ago, weeks ago. But just a couple. Saints, look at the power of God. Look at the power of Jesus Christ. Look at this, saints. This is this is so amazing. I can tell you what I feel on my body right now is the same thing that I feel on my body while I'm ministering. Look at this thing.
Saints, I'm telling you. The power of God will be so amazing in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm telling you, Saints, whatever you got to do to get there, get there. Atlanta, Georgia, I'm going to be ministering, healing, deliverance, prophecy, wisdom, and the glory, presence of God. The manifest presence of Jesus is going to be so amazing. That's going to be on October the 5th, 6th, and 7th. I'm telling you, saints, <laughs> I'm talking to you right now about something that's real powerful right now. I'm dealing with supernatural. Uh, flowing in the supernatural wealth. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. I'm dealing with flowing in the supernatural or wealth. The supernatural wealth. Now, let me say this. Before God created any of us, he was already rich. He was already wealthy. Everything belonged to him. Psalm 34, I mean, Psalm 24 said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So he was already rich. This one I want you to catch. He created man to share his riches with them. Because he was already rich. He was already wealthy. He was already all sufficient when El Shaddai. What he did was he created Adam. He pits Adam in a garden and there's a place in the garden called Havila. It said where the gold is. So all the gold was in Havila. So God put money in the garden that he planted Adam. He created him to be rich like him. Because money is a representative of dominion. And even though you can pray real good and do different stuff real good, if you don't ever receive your money and you leave that side of God, the devil still has the right to operate in your life. It's more to this. It's spiritual. If you don't receive the God kind of wealth, you still got demons operating in your life. Now, if you're on the path to what God promised in the realm of wealth and riches, you not letting the devil operate in your life. But if you are settling for a poor Christianity, you ain't doing Jesus no favor. Jesus ain't going to give you no extra cookie for being poor. <laughs> Jesus actually, he scorned poor people. He said, the poor you'll have what you always that's the sarcasm. The sarcasm. We see Jesus, his sarcasm towards poorness. He said, the poor you'll have with you always. What he was saying, it's going, it's going to always be people that's stupid. That choose to suffer unnecessarily after I done came to feed them. After I done came to bless them. They still going to act as if. That's okay. So you're going to have them always. Listen, a curse mentality against a verse mentality are two separate things. A curse mentality is how you think when you don't know the word of God. A verse mentality is what kills the curse mentality. When you get the word of God in your heart. Now, let me just say this to you. When God made Adam rich, he didn't protect the riches. He didn't protect the wealth. He didn't protect the increase. He let the devil make him disobey God while he was rich, while he was blessed. 
What God did now, he created the seed process so that we'll be fully mature with the wealth and the riches. You're supposed to have plenty of money. <laughs> You're supposed to have more than enough. You, you got the inheritance rights. You got financial rights. You got money rights. You got wealth rights. And wealth is such a powerful anointing. The devil been trying to hide this anointing from saints. Because once you get that anointing, you'll step into a dominion uh, place where you can rule and reign. But until you step into the dominion realm, you still got satanic powers ruling over you. God made Abraham rich. In Genesis chapter 13, verse uh, 2, it said, Abraham was very rich in silver and gold. Now God made her rich in money. Now, saints, listen, let me just say this. Don't listen to broke folk when you get a revelation of scripture. Because there are people that love being retarded. They love being retarded. They love. They love being cursed. They love being underneath demonic power. And there's nothing that get poverty demons more angry than when you talk about wealth and riches because they ain't got none. And they ain't never going to have none because they're against God. And God ain't trying to bless no dumb person with a dumb and deaf spirit. So make sure you protect your ear gates when God give you access, access to wealth gates. When God gives you life and life more abundantly, protect that life and life more abundantly because there's a large percentage of people on the earth that are retarded. They don't have the wisdom of God. They have the wisdom of stupid. <laughs> Where how they live is not even biblical. How they live is not even in the word of God. Your prosperity makes Jesus rejoice. Jesus wants you rich. Jesus wants you wealthy. He wants you to have more than enough. Jesus wants you to have so much that you can be a blessing to others and to yourself at the same time. Jesus created a supernatural economy that reigns over all economies. An economy of wealth. An economy of plenty of money. An economy of debt cancellation. An economy of supernatural abundance. And don't let the devil cheat you out of your inheritance with false humility. Because like I said, struggling and creating your own sorrow ain't going to get you no extra crowns in heaven. Saints, there's some people, they're going to they gonna wish that they would have listened to the word of God and stopped trying to have their own self-righteousness. Because what happened is you suffer unnecessarily. Huh? You go through unnecessary storms when your finances are deformed. You know that, right? You go through unnecessary storms when your finances are deformed. When your finances are deformed, you can't do nothing for Jesus. You see people, you just say, I'll pray for you. What did you just, all you're going to do is just pray for me? Jesus didn't do that. Jesus went around doing good. Huh? So how could you, listen, I'm letting you know, saints, there was a prosperity anointing on Jesus. Jesus had the power of God upon him to prosper other people. He had so much power on him that he was able to go from city to city, state to state, and prosper other people with prosperity. There's a God realm of finances. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 36, verse 11 said, if you 
obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity. Now, I want you to think about this. Every day you were supposed to move in supernatural prosperity. Every day. The Bible said you'll spend your days in prosperity. You were supposed to have a day full of prosperity. Every moment that you live, you wake up, you were supposed to live in prosperity. That means that you'll have success financially and finances will keep on coming to you and no demon will be able to stop it. The lack of finances is connected to the attack of Satan. The lack of finances is connected to the attack of Satan. That's what Satan do. He make money funny. He make money clown against you. But what Jesus gave you a system to outsmart him. He gave you a system to go beyond the trickery of the serpent. He gave you a system so that you wouldn't have to be underneath the bondages financially. Now, saints, when Job got rich by God, all God did was talk about Job's riches. God made it his prerogative to keep on boasting about his materialistic blessings. Let me give you a secret. Jesus loves your materialistic blessings. He loves you having stuff. It's Satan that's mad at your stuff because he loves his bootleg children to have it. He wants his retarded children to have your stuff. So when you get wisdom about the stuff being belong, it, it belonging to you, that's when he get angry. That's when he get upset. Because what happens is now you're becoming the portrait that God wanted you to become. The money was supposed to be in your hands. The finances were supposed to be in your hands. God put Abraham in the king's, the wicked king's presence because he transferred the money to the real king. I want you to see that, saints. These kings were fake kings. So when Abraham got in their presence, God made them give the wealth over to Abraham because he was the real king. Saints, I, I'm telling you, woman of God, you don't understand that the Holy Spirit is going to make wealth come to you from people that think that it belonged to them because they've been robbing it. Listen, do you know that your ignorance extends the possession of wealth in wicked hands? Ignorance extends the possession of wealth in the wicked hands? Ignorance extends the possession of wealth in wicked hands? When you get knowledge, you're receiving an empowerment from God to possess what belongs to you. God gives you rich knowledge, then he gives you rich finances. If you get a rich knowledge, it's an indication to let you know that the finances just keep on coming. But he got to get you set up here because people going to come to you with falsehood and witchcraft statements that's not even in the Bible. They're going to come to you with stuff that's not even in the word. Now watch this here. Let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 3. Verse 29. Galatians 3, 29. Look what it say. It say, and if ye be of Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. What? The promise to be poor? <laughs> Say, don't listen to this dumb generation. The promise to be broke? The promise to not have nothing, right? To wait until you go to heaven. 
Yeah, that's what we became heirs of a promise to wait till we go to heaven to get everything. The promise of nothing. Nothing. Remember, the church told us that if you got stuff that's not of God, is it money, money, money. Okay, so it's nothing. The Bible just said that if you be Christ. Now watch, the Bible just called us Christ. Huh? Huh? The Bible just called us Christ. If ye be Christ. So I'm Christ. Huh? I'm Christ. Put your name there. I'm Christ. If you. If. Why they say if? Because everybody can't be Christ. Some people love ignorance. Some people love struggle. Some people love drama. Some people love Confusion. Some people love fighting. The word of God. So watch this here. If ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. How could you be Abraham's seed and he was rich and you not going to be rich? That's complete stupidity and foolishness. If your biological father in the spirit is rich and you choose not to be rich. If God made him rich and God was okay with him being rich and God gave him the riches. And the Bible just said that you are his seed. That means that you come from his bloodline, his inheritance, his experiences, his mantles, his anointing, his prosperity, his fruit. His thought life, his mantles, then you receive the riches anointing. You got to catch that you receive the riches anointing. The fact that the Bible said that you are Abraham's seed, that means that you receive the same impartation that Abraham had. And Genesis chapter 13, verse 2 said that he was very rich in silver and gold. So you receive the same impartation of riches. A riches anointing fell upon you and it was transferred to you when you received the fact of Jesus making you Abraham's seed. Now, saints, let me show you something. If we go to Galatians chapter 4, we go to Galatians chapter 4. Let's go to verse 7. Let's go to verse 7. Look what it say here. You are no more a servant, but a son. You are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Saints, the scripture just told us that we are no longer servants. We are sons. And if we are sons, we have become an heir of God. Saints, do you understand this? That means that everything God owns in the earth, Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord. He has given it to you. He imparted you to become owners of it. The fact that he just said that you became an heir of God, it means that everything God holds. Now, let's go to Psalm 115. Let me show you again. Let me show you again in the scripture. Saints, do you know who fools are? Fools are people that try to argue without biblical backing. Fools are people that try to fight without any truth Supporting them. Let's go to Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. 
but the earth has he given to the children of men. The Bible just said that he gave you the earth. Okay, so that explained Galatians chapter four, verse seven, where he said that if you are a son, you are an heir of God through Christ. So now we have the conf confirmation of that scripture. In Psalm 115, verse 16, it said the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Now, saints, let's go to uh, Galatians 4, 7. It says, now you are no more a servant. Why did he say you're not a servant? Because Jesus said, uh, servants don't know what their master is doing. So when you operate as a servant, that means that you still got ignorance operating in you. And that's why a lot of people that call themselves saved, they got ignorance operating in them. That's why they stay sick, they stay broke, they stay uh, in abusive uh, relationships, they stay underneath satanic strongholds because they're operating as servants, not sons. When you start operating like a son, you get persecuted. If everybody is all right with you, you're not operating in sonship. The world hates you when you operate like Jesus did. But that's what Jesus told you. He wanted you to operate like him. Jesus wanted you to be his twin in the earth. Look what the Bible say in Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. Ye, if ye be of Christ, ye be Christ. The Bible just said that you can be Christ. Then are you Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. What was the promise? It wasn't just eternal life. The promise was abundant life here on the earth. Abundant life is for earth. Eternal life is for heaven. The Bible let us see that we are heirs according to the promise. And then it said we are heirs of God. So we have a right. So what he promised us, what he promised us, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord was going to make us rich. That's a promise. Now, let's look at. Uh, let's look at uh, Galatians chapter four, verse eight. This is for people that hear the gospel and refuse it. This is for people that God reveals truth to them and they still choose to be underneath satanic strongholds. This is for people, this text right here is for people that choose to be slaves after Jesus just said, done said, I came and I gave you the power to conquer, be more than conquerors. Look, look at this text here. The Bible said in Galatians chapter four, verse eight, it said, when you did not know God, you served them which by nature are not gods, meaning demon spirits. This is what he means is a, is a parable to this. It said, when you did not know God, you served those who were not gods. And then it said in verse nine, but now after you have known God and you are known by God, why turn ye again to the beggarly elements where you, where you desire again to be in bondage? I wanted to say it just like how the scripture said it. Saints, Galatians chapter four, verse eight said that when you did not know Jesus, you was enslaved to those that were not Jesus. They was not gods, meaning demon spirits, evil spirits, because they are not gods. But they try to rule you and put you in slavery. But watch what they say in verse nine. It said that now, after you have known God, and 
you are known by God, why turn again to the beggarly elements where you desire to be in bondage? This is the spirit of the Lord crying out here. What he's saying, after I done told you I want you blessed, I done told you that I want you healed. I told you that I want you to be free. I told you that I want you to be perfect. I told you that I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. I told you to fear not. I told you don't let not, let not your heart be troubled. I told you that my blessing was going to make you rich. I told you that I was going to increase you more and more. Why let yourself go back to ignorance and strongholds? Huh? Why let yourself go back there? After I done let you know that I want you to have plenty of money. I told you in my word. I told you wealth and riches was going to be in your house. I understand our generation is retarded that they don't read the Bible. But I've come to give you the gospel of Jesus Christ in this Bible. And God placed the apostolic mantle upon me because he knew I was going to have to fight through witches and ditches. The Bible said, after you known God, and you have been known by God, don't turn ye again to those beggarly elements. What are beggarly elements? Well, you got to beg. You got to beg and act like you trying to get God to bless you. You got to beg. And try to get God to prosper you and act like you got to force him to when it's already his desire. See, saints, those beggarly elements are so dangerous. Why? Because it sets you back underneath slavery. And when you step into financial slavery, now even your prayer life and every other life that you thought you had in God becomes corrupt. You can't live the fullness of what Jesus told you to have if you don't got no money. You can't. And the Lord wants you to sow your way into plenty of money. He wants you to sow your way into supernatural prosperity. Let's, let's go here. So we just see Galatians chapter 4 verse 8. It tells us about you going back to slavery and bondage after God done told you what he wanted. Now, saints, I'm going to say this. A lot of people are trying to speak for Jesus, but Jesus not supporting them. There are people that's trying to act like Jesus is using them to defend his name and say, oh, it's not about prosperity. It's not about this. Jesus don't want this. He just wants souls. You can't defend Jesus against what he just made clear to you that he wanted. Saints, let me give you a secret. If there is a boss working at McDonald's and he said, I only want cheeseburgers served today. I only want cheeseburgers. I don't want nobody to serve no fries. Just cheeseburgers. Only serve cheeseburgers today. If I go up to the drive-thru and I say, I want, a cheese, I want my cheeseburger today. And I go up to the first window and the person tell me, no. Our boss don't want no cheeseburgers. Who you think you is asking for cheeseburgers? Cheeseburgers is not about this business. Huh? This, this business is not about cheeseburgers. But the boss just said that he want cheeseburgers only served today. And then there's this dumb worker that's trying to tell you, no, you can't get no cheeseburger. The boss don't want no cheeseburger. 
He don't, this, this business not about cheeseburgers. This is what people been doing in the body of Christ for years. Jesus said he want us to be rich. And, and, and people that say that they represent him. Talks, oh, it's not about money. It's not about this. It's not about this. But he just said that's what he wants. If you're going to be rich, you got to beware of the retarded folk. If you're going to be wealthy, you got to beware of retarded folk. Because they will tell you that it's not right when Jesus just told you it was right. You got to understand, there's a lot of people that's talking God, but they're working for the devil. They talking Jesus, but they're working for Satan. And Satan hates your prosperity. Satan hates your increase. Satan hates you living a comfortable, blessed life. You want to know what gets a witch mad? A witch gets mad when you get money. Everybody in witchcraft, every demon spirit gets angry when you prosper. There's nothing that torments demons more than your prosperity. If your prosperity is going to torment demons, you should put a push. You should put a strive to aim at God's plan to prosper you. Now, saints, prosperity is such a mighty anointing. If you move in prosperity, you're going to have to protect the prosperity anointing because you're going to have stuff that's going to pop up from the demonic kingdom to affect your momentum in the prosperity anointing because the devil don't want you to move in prosperity. Satan does not want you to move in prosperity because once you move in prosperity, you got power to decide where you're going to live. You got power to decide what you're going to drive. Satan love you eating crumbs. You wasn't created to eat no crumbs. Eating crumbs mean that you got to wait till someone eat and then you just get the back draft. Huh? You just get the, the cold food. You don't get the warm food. Everybody else eating warm food, but you just get the cold food. You, you, you wasn't created to be no fly. Flies got to trespass on food and they got to steal food. Stop operating like a fly when God created you to fly. Don't operate like a fly when God created you to fly. He created you to take off in the financial realm. And not have no wealth issues, have no money issues, have no financial issues. It been given unto you to eat the good of the land. This is going to shock you. Go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. This is going to shock you. Go to Galatians chapter 4, 22. Look what it says. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. He said, tell me, this is Apostle Paul speaking to the church. He said, tell me, why do you desire to be under the law? Did you not hear the law? You, this is what Apostle Paul is trying to tell them. Y'all want to be living underneath the law. You don't understand that the law is bondage. You don't understand having lack is bondage. You don't understand struggling with sin is bondage. You don't understand struggling with debts and struggling with your finances is a curse. He was asking them, tell me why. What's so good about being stupid? You see people defend being broke. <laughs> you, you. Saints, you see people all over the world. They fight for the cause of being poor. Because they retarded. 
You 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 want to talk about being poor like it's, you are advocate for the poor. What? Let me let me give you a secret. Let me let me set you up. Let me say this to you. Let me set you up. Defending a poor man is is the same as defending a pedophile. They both are violators. Jesus. Jesus. You call what I said, saints? Defending a poor person is the same as defending a pedophile. They both are violators. They both have violated the law of God. Watch. A child is a seed. A pedophile goes and violates the seed. My God. A poor person is poor. My God. Because they violated the seed. My God. Because God created the seed for them to be delivered. So, both of them violated a seed. The predator, uh, the, uh, the pedophile violated a seed. The poor man violated a seed. So both of them are violators. For you to de defend a poor person, it is the same as you defending a violator. When someone is a violator, they they are, they, they are someone that is disrespecting God's laws. Saints, there's nothing godly about being broke. There's nothing godly about being poor. There's nothing godly about not being able to live the way that you want to live. There's nothing godly about that. That's not the God realm. That's the satanic realm still operating. You want to shut down that satanic realm by using God's weapons. God's laws was, was created to set you free from the bondage and the boundaries of satanic limitation where you can't live the way that you want to live. You was not supposed to live in a realm where you want stuff. The Bible said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why was David saying that he shall not want? Because David understood how to step into the God realm of finances. And when he stepped into the God realm of finances, he had the power to live how he wanted to live, drive what he he wanted to drive, be with who he wanted to be with. Yeah. That, that, that's what happened. Huh? David was in the blessing so strong that he didn't have any wants. Do you understand that when you get into the blessing realm and you get into the supernatural uh, flow of wealth, You'll never have to live a wanted life. You're supposed to live free from the demon of want and the demon of need and the demon of the cares of this life. You wasn't supposed to have that operating in you. You were supposed to live so abundant, so rich, so prosperous, so wealthy. The Bible said that Joe was the richest man on the east. So in the east side, there was nobody that could compete with Joe. My God. They pulled out their money. Joe put out his and said, Wook Ching. You saw that right there? Joe, Wook Ching. Huh? They, they, put, they put out their cash. Joe said, oh, you got cash? That ain't no cash to me. Wook Ching. Huh? All of a sudden, Job put out all this stuff and there was no competition. You got to understand, Job was so rich that ain't nobody could even compete with him with what he had. All God did was talk about what he had. God boasted to Satan about his riches. If God boasts about riches, you think that you can't boast about riches? See, saints, stop trying to live like people that got a form of godliness. They the retarded people. They have you living this life of sickness and brokenness and struggle. Watch, they preach to you, hey, we all got flaws. We all messed up. So you live your whole life messed up because of a stupid old 
that had a Bible in his hand that didn't even make no sense. It wasn't even in the Bible. And he, now you live a whole life time saying, listen, I'm a struggle because we all struggle. I'm just keeping it 100. If your 100 leave you at 1% of righteousness, it's not really 100. If your 100 leave you at 1% of wealth, it's not really 100. You still left in a deficit. Huh? Do you know what a deficit is? You too deaf to sit in heavenly places. Jesus, you, you, you know what a deficit is? Huh? It, it means that you too deaf to sit in the place that God done died for. He done sent his son to die for you, for you to have. A deficit is mean you too deaf to sit. You can't sit. In heavenly places, you can't sit. The Bible said, he made me lie down in green pastures. Psalm 20, Psalm 23. Because he got to make you lie down in wealth. He got to make you lie down in prosperity. Why? Why did the Bible say he made me lie down? Because you're going to have to pit a lie down before you can lie down. You're going to have to pit a lie down because the devil going to lie to you. So you're going to have to pit all the lies down about money, pit all the lies down about increase, pit all the lies down about riches and wealth for you to lie down in green pastures. He got to make you lie down in the green, in the prosperity. Huh? Prosperity is a weapon. That kills all financial demons. That's why God said, I wish above everything that I have a wish for, that you'll prosper. God pit prosperity above salvation. God pit his wish of prosperity above eternal life. God said, I wish above all things, every single thing, your healing. Everything I wish above all things that you'll prosper. God put prosperity as the main objective for him working in your life. That's why God working in your life. That's why he teaching you the seed. That's why he teaching you how to sow money into the gospel. Because he's showing you how to prosper. He giving you the secrets of prosperity. And saints, people live their whole life talking about, oh, I love God and God love me. But listen, I can't tell. <laughs> I saw a picture the other day. A girl said, I survived. I survived. <laughs> she said, I survived. What she said, like nine accidents this year. I was in seven accidents this year. <laughs> and somebody right below, they wrote below her post. She said, this is what she said. I've been in like seven, nine accidents this year. She said, and God, God kept me through it all. And saints, somebody wrote her underneath there and said, it looked like God trying to kill you. <laughs> say, say, they say, they say, it looked like God trying to kill you. Huh? I think that's what they say. It looked like, they said, God, it looked like God trying to kill you. Huh? Saints, when you going through financial crashes, listen, that ain't the will of God for you. <laughs> when you're going through financial hardship, that's not the will of God for you. And, and, and saints, God ain't involved in you lacking. The devil is involved in you lacking. Huh? The Holy Spirit got enough power to take you from glory to glory in your finances. You supposed to move in the financial realm with your money. You supposed to move in the financial realm of, of, of anointing and power with your money. God created sowing so that you could wear a mantle in the earth where all silver and gold will be submissive to you. God created you to be the ruler over riches, not the devil. The devil occupying riches out of the children of God's ignorance. As long as they're ignorant, 
He can just have the money in somebody else's hands while you are the child of God that it was supposed to be in your hands. Saints, do you know that when you don't operate in the boldness of this word and you don't take authority over what God said is yours, it'll never come to you even though God had it for you? It'll just come to somebody else and you'll live your whole life wishing and wishing and God saying, I gave you the keys. Whatsoever you bind on earth, your seed binds financial demons. Your seed binds financial demons. Your seed binds demonic spirits. Huh? Your seed binds uh, financial demons, canker worms and palmer worms and caterpillars. Your seed arrests every thieving demon, every spirit of thieves. Because saints, you got to understand the thief in realm of Satan. The thief in realm of Satan is where Satan, he robs you and he uses uh, uh, fear to keep you from sowing. So now he can, uh, he can intercept what God wanted you to accept in the realm of blessings, in the realm of prosperity. He can intercept. Saints, do you know how many demons stand in front of your money daily? And, and believers don't believe in sowing. Saints, when I got a revelation of how principalities stand over money and they stop money from coming to you in a day, they stop financial miracles where, where God will speak to someone and Satan will harden their heart real quick so that they couldn't get the money to you. And God showed me how the seed will go and break that wall. And the, listen, you don't understand. Your seed is like you walking around the walls of Jericho seven times. And on the seventh time, remember the walls came tumbling down? Huh? Saints, your seed will make financial walls come tumbling down and make wealth be open to come to you because the devil will use all type of fear to stop you so that the enemy can stand as a wall over your wealth. Saints, do you know that there's wealth walls and your seed tears down the wealth wall? Every time you sow into your man of God, you're sowing into victory and jubilee that delivers you from, your, from, from that wall being around your life, that captivity being around your life where you just, you just condemned to a certain amount of finances. You Listen, you wasn't supposed to have an income. You were supposed to have an outcome. And your outcome was supposed to be your income. Your outcome was supposed to be what comes in. Every day of your life, every moment of your life, your outcome was supposed to be your income. It was supposed to be coming in day in and day, day out. Saints, don't let wealth walls keep you from your wealth gates. Don't let wealth walls keep you from your wealth doors. Because when you step into wealth, that means that you have succeeded with the seed. Your seed must succeed. Don't let your seed be a dropout. Huh? If your seed become a dropout, you'll never receive your financial diploma. You'll never enter into financial university. You know what financial university is? God give you all the finances in the universe. He make all the finances, all the money in the universe submit to you. When you say money coming to me now, all the finances in the earth got to hear you. Don't let your sowing, your seed become a dropout. Your seed is supposed to get you into wealth and riches, and abundance, and prosperity. But you're going to have to study to show yourself approved towards God. You're going to have to study the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of your prophet, because they carry in instructions that's going to help you pass this semester that's going on in your finances. Watch, in the semester, the devil wants you to see mess 
financially. In your financial semester, the devil wants you to see mess. In your semester, he wants you to see all type of financial mess, all type of uh, uh, money mess. Watch this. Switch your financial semester to your financial see master. Because you're going to have to see master Jesus if you're going to come out of this, this uh, financial hole. You're going to have to see master Jesus. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You can't even sow until you see master. You got to see master Jesus. You got to look unto Jesus because what, what Jesus is the one that's going to produce the harvest that belongs to you, but you got to sow your way out. Join me on Periscope.